you might be wondering what's in my hands. In the past three years, I have been mocked over and over and over because of, of a Kurdish proverb saying, you cannot hold an egg and a stone in one hand. It's equivalent to the English proverb, a person who chases two rabbits catches neither. Well, I held my education, my work, my volunteering activities, my family life all in one hand. And yet, I proved everyone wrong. My name is Ajin. My work, my dedication, my passion is to make a positive change in my community that has been struck by war four times in the past three decades. I'm a full-time activist. Today, I'll share with you how I have discovered a key ingredient of success while I was on the verge of giving up in the past overloaded years. I was 27 when I started studying civil engineering. I already had a bachelor's degree in geology, but because it was my dream to become an engineer, in pursuit of that, I became university student again. I decided not to let my husband or my family pay for my dream. I wanted to do it myself. So I started to work as a primary school teacher to pay for my tuition fees, believing that teaching would build a new generation and help me become an engineer. During my new student life, I noticed that students were wasting their time with no purpose, while they could use it to improve their community. So I started to establish a volunteering network along with our friends at university. We planned to use our precious time wisely instead of wasting it on social media. Along with our studies, we held a blood donation campaign for thalassemia patients. We collected money and clothes for elderly. We visited orf orphanages several times, trying to bring back smiling faces and lift moral, and so many more. That's how I lived the past few years of my life going to classes in the morning, teaching in the afternoon, attending volunteering meeting, and coming home at the end of the day to pursue my commitments as a wife. When I had exam at university, I had to take permission from my workplace. When my own students had exam, I had to take permission from my professors. And on volunteering sessions, I wasn't performing as good as I wanted. Isn't it difficult to balance all of those things? Well, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you. Many studies show how difficult it is for a woman to work in the Middle East. We face uncountable challenges and obstacles every single day. We don't even have some of our basic human rights. And for a woman to balance her duties at school, at work, at volunteering commitments, and family life is one of the biggest challenges to overcome. I was about to give up on everything, but something helped me to get up, which I considered as a key ingredient of success. This thing is very simple, not a rocket science. It was by using this ingredient that I became the top student at university. I was asked to become the director of the school I was teaching at. And I got my degree in only three years instead of four. 
I was selected to be the student ambassador of my university. And best of all, <laughs> and best of all, my university's president offered to pay for me if I, if I ever wanted to pursue a master's degree. And I got promoted to a board member. <laughs> And I got promoted to a board member in the largest volunteering network in my country. How did that happen? Am I different than others? Or do I have what they call luck? No. But I used the ingredient that I had found. As I mentioned, the ingredient is very easy. The ingredient is to put yourself into people's shoes. Let me explain how and why this is very vital in success. In our everyday life, we almost always fail to understand people we are dealing with because we are so busy with our own life and thoughts. If we take ourselves out of the picture and let go of our thoughts, feelings, opinions, and with an open heart, listen to what people have to say, the outcome would be amazingly different. Discovering this ingredient wasn't easy. One day in the lecture, my professor took a break from explaining the material and he talked about something irrelevant to the class, to the subject. So I subconsciously started marking my own student's exam paper, as that day was the deadline of handing the paper. The professor looked at me and saw me grading the exam paper instead of listening to him. He got very angry. He kicked me out. I was shouted at and embarrassed in front of all my classmates. I was humiliated. After that, I continued my day, and I went to work. While I was teaching, I noticed that some of the students were feeling tired and lacking energy. So I decided to give them a break and tell them some jokes in order to refresh their minds. I noticed that some of them were not listening to my joke. They were talking to each other and they were laughing. I was about to get angry at them, but suddenly I remembered how I felt that day in the morning when my professor kicked me out. And I reminded myself, my goal is to let them rest and get refreshed before I continue teaching. And what they are doing is still refreshing, but on their own way. So what's wrong with that? Like this, I let them do whatever they wanted during our small breaks. Doing this had a huge impact. Not a single student failed in my class, which I considered as an achievement, because science is viewed as among the most challenging subjects in primary school. I started applying this technique at university too. I would put myself into my professor's shoes focusing on his body language and tone, trying to figure out what he considered as an important topic. By doing this, I was always able to successfully predict 70% of the exam questions. This technique proved to be so useful to me that my classmates would only study the questions that I have predicted to be in the exam. You might still think that this only worked for me. But think, why do big companies spend millions and billions of dollars on a marketing campaign? You know that for a marketing campaign to be successful, the number one thing is to put yourself into clients' shoes, to know what they want, what they need, how they feel. Who likes Apple product? 
many of us. In 2010, Apple tripled their budget on marketing. Why? Because they know their audience. They use them wisely so that they can invest. I was very passionate about using those techniques to put myself into people's shoes. And I was also passionate about living in a civilized society, seeing the world in others' perspective. I would love to feel others and let them know that I feel them. The world does care about them. When I discovered that there is a volunteering network that have the same desire, I contacted them and I became a part of their mission. The network has become the largest volunteering network in the whole of the country. In only one year of being founded, they got more than 6,000 volunteers. Just because we were worked based on what people need and feel. <laughs> to summarize, putting yourself into people's shoes works. It works for your business, for your study, for your life. It works in almost any situation that you deal with human beings. Putting myself into people's shoes brought me here today. What if we all do the same? Thank you. <laughs>